Let me turn to Ambassador Haley. Why you and not the former president? Well, I think you look at the fact that we're almost $34 trillion in debt. Sixty percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Fifty percent of American families can't afford diapers. One in six American families can't pay their utility bills. You have parents who are worried about what's being said or taught to their child in the classroom. There's no transparency. We have anti-Semitism all over our college campuses, and students feel unsafe. You've got an open border where terrorists can come through. And we've got wars happening all over us, and there are dangers around us. You know, everybody wants to talk about President Trump. Well, I can talk about President Trump. I can tell you that I think he was the right president at the right time. I don't think he's the right president now. I think that he put us $8 trillion in debt, and our kids are never going to forgive us for that. I think the fact that he used to be right on Ukraine and, and foreign issues, now he's getting weak in the knees and trying to be friendly again. I think that we've got to go back to the fact that we can't can't live in the past. We can't live in other headlines. We've got to start focusing on what's going to make America strong and proud. And that's what I'm focused on doing. Let's make sure we pay down our debt. I think we need an accountant in the White House. Let's make sure that we have transparency in the classroom. As a mom, I know what that means. Let's make sure we secure our borders so that our families are safe. Let's get crime down because our families want to know that they can be safe no matter where they go. And as the wife of a combat veteran, I will tell you, a military needs to know we have our back, and we need to make sure that America is Ambassador, strong. thank you very much. What would you do? What would you be urging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do? Would you consider a humanitarian pause, for example? The first thing I said to him when it happened was I said, finish them finish them. And the reason is I worked on this every day when I was at the United Nations. And we have to remember that they have to, one, eliminate Hamas, two, support Israel with whatever they need, whenever they need it, and three, make sure we bring our hostages home. We need to be very clear-eyed to know there would be no Hamas without Iran. There would be no Hezbollah without Iran. There would not be the Houthis without Iran. And there wouldn't be the Iranian militias in Syria and Iraq that are trying to here hit our military men and women if it hadn't been for Iran. And who is funding Iran right now? China is buying oil from Iran. Russia is getting drones and missiles from Iran. And there is an unholy alliance. We need to be clear-eyed. The last thing we need to do is to tell Israel what to do. The only thing we should be doing is supporting them and eliminating Hamas. It is not that Israel needs America. America needs Israel. They are the tip of the spear when it comes to this Islamic terrorism, and we need to make sure that we have their backs in that process. All right. Thank you. Say they're five inch heels, and I don't wear them unless you can run in them. Um, well, we got two of you on stage. The second that thing that I will say is. I wear heels. They're not for a fashion statement. They're for ammunition. What we need to be doing for Iraq and Syria is, first of all, the idea that our men and women could be targeted and that we've allowed almost 100 hits to happen under Biden's watch is unthinkable. We need to understand this is Iran giving the green light, telling them what to do, and we shouldn't be doing the tit for tat like what Joe Biden has done. We need to go and take out their infrastructure that they are using to make those strikes with so they can never do it again. Iran responds to strength. You punch them one and you punch them hard and they will back off. But what we don't need is Biden falling all over himself to get back in the Iran deal. Him giving six billion dollars to get five hostages home. Him telling Netanyahu now that he needs a pause or a ceasefire. We don't need him going and sitting there tiptoeing around Iran because he thinks they're going to do something. You don't respond to an enemy and a terrorist with fear you respond with strength. When you do that, that's when the world pays attention, and that's when Iran stops. Ambassador Haley, what do you say to Americans who are simply afraid right now in this in this current environment that we're talking about? I think, it, you know, you look at the, the country, and the country is all out of sorts. I think, look at what these kids are dealing with on college campuses. What makes me so angry is not only do you have the kids barricaded in the library, they've said they were going to shoot up the kosher dining hall. You've got kids' dorm rooms who are being set on fire because they have something related to Israel on their doors. No person should ever feel in danger like this. And this is what I would say about our college presidents, is if the KKK were doing this, 
every college president would be up in arms. This is no different. You should treat it exactly the same. Anti-Semitism is just as awful as racism, and we've got to make sure they're protected. And for everybody that's protesting on these college campuses in favor of Hamas, let me remind you something. Hamas said death to Israel and death to America. They hate and would kill you too. And the idea that they're talking about genocide for the Jewish people, that's not the values of America. That's not us. We're better than that. We don't need to celebrate terrorists. We don't need to celebrate genocide. We don't need to celebrate violence towards anybody. We need to go back and soul search in our country and remember what we are about. And we are about taking care of people, not going and making them live in fear because some other terrorist activity says they want to destroy them. Ambassador, thank you. Ramaswamy, else, thank you. Out of both sides Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. We ask the question. Ambassador Haley, well, what is your take on more funding for Ukraine? I am telling you, Putin and President Xi are salivating at the thought that someone like that could become president. They would love to the see The fact that. of the matter is she doesn't answer so this the question. Is what I will tell you. We're is, driving Russia all, into China's hands. Because of you these had your time policies. to talk. The ambassador has the floor. Ambassador, Thank you. Please. The first thing I'll tell you is we all remember what that thug did when he invaded Ukraine. We all know that half a million people have died because of Putin. And here is a freedom-loving, pro-American country that is fighting for its survival and its democracy. No, I don't think we should give them cash. I think we should give them the equipment and the ammunition to win. And I'll tell you, if Biden had done it when they first asked for it, this war would be over. But let's also remember this. When you left Afghanistan in shambles and left them with a ton of weapons and money, it's not that we left, it's how we left. When you look at Ukraine, don't think for a second, now everybody wants to move away from Ukraine, they'll want to move away from Israel a year from now. America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends. After 9-11, we needed a lot of friends. Now is the time to get partnerships. This unholy alliance between Russia, Ukraine, and China is real. There is a reason that Taiwanese want us to support the Ukrainians. It's because they know that China is coming after them next. There is a reason Ukrainians want us to support Israelis, because they know that if Iran wins, Russia wins. Ambassador, we have to see the combination of the three. Ambassador, China has the largest naval fleet in the world. They have 350 ships. They'll have 400 ships in two years. We won't even have 350 ships in two decades. China has built up their military. It's not just land, air, and sea. They're doing cyber. They're doing arms artificial intelligence. They're doing space. America needs to modernize our military. We need to do everything we can. The first thing is you go and you make sure you have the back of you, backs of Ukraine. That's why the Taiwanese want us to support Ukraine, because they know that sends the biggest message to China. The second thing is we go to China and we start being tough on them. No more sales of our American soil to China, and let's take back what they've already stolen. Then you go and you t to the universities. No more having millions of of dollars go to our universities. Then we will go and end all for formal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans from fentanyl, something Ron has yet to say that he's going to do. And then we modernize our military. When we strengthen our military, when we modernize it with the focus of cyber, artificial intelligence, and space, when we make sure that we have the backs of our friends, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in Ukraine, and we should be arming Taiwan. Make sure they have the equipment they need. Make sure they have the training they need now. There is nothing China fears more than knowing that America will have Taiwan's back. Let's make sure that we show it by making sure they have the equipment they need. Thank you, Governor. Ambassador Haley, speak to the parents out there. There are probably TikTok apps on half the phones in this uh, auditorium. Speak no, to I'm going to speak to the fact that two people hit me and you didn't let me respond. So let's first talk about the fact that they want to talk about the Chinese land from 10 years ago. Yes, I brought a fiberglass company 10 years ago to South Carolina, but Ron, you are the chair of your economic development agency that as of last week said Florida is the ideal place 
for Chinese businesses. Not only that, you have a company that is manufacturer of Chinese military planes. You have it. They are expanding two training sites at two of your airports now, one which is 12 miles away from a naval base. Then you have another company that's expanding, and they were just invaded by the Department of Homeland Security. So mine was 10 years ago. You gave Yours them was stuff. Six I didn't ago. give them anything. What's your story? And I abolished that agency that she's talking about. No, Enterprise he, Florida, we abolished it. And, of course, we banned China from buying the land. the website Not last exactly week. a Go great check. recruiting page if you're love. banning them from purchasing you land. You the website so we've last stood up week. Thank you, Ambassador right Haley. Florida. Thank you very much. You know, when he talks about me praising China, he doesn't know the fact that the reason China was praised was because I negotiated with China and Russia the largest set of sanctions against North Korea in a generation. We are the re- That is literally the reason North Korea stopped testing ballistic missiles. So I said China did good on their part. That was a negotiation. You said they were great friend is do- what you said, Nikki. Those are your words, not mine. And so just when own up to you it. Would never you can change your mind. That's that allowed. Negotiation but don't done. lie to the people about what you've said or what you've done in China South Carolina. My entire you have brought them to South Carolina. Ron is right Nations. about that. Every day I fought China. And I did it Look at the by making sure no facts. one she could get any country. agency heads in the U.N. I did it by making sure that we called them out on human rights. I did it by making sure that we held them accountable on everything that they did. That's the reason we got out of the Human Rights Council. That's the reason we I, called them out. And I have, there's not been a day I haven't Nikki stopped. Under the sky, was it? Americans in rural communities are being especially squeezed by inflation right now. An Iowa State University study found that last year inflation cost rural households about an extra $5,000. How would you specifically help rural Americans who are suffering right now with that? Well, I'm a product of rural America. I grew up in rural South Carolina. And I can tell you what we're seeing now in America is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. We have to go and start beefing up the middle class. And the first thing I would do is I will eliminate the federal um, gas and diesel tax in this country. We'll cut taxes on the middle class. But we have to stop the spending binge that's happening by Republicans and Democrats in Congress. I will make sure, one, we claw back the $500 billion of unspent COVID dollars that are out there. Instead of 87,000 IRS agents going after middle America, we'll go after the hundreds of billions of dollars of COVID fraud that exist, one out of every seven dollars. We'll stop the spending, we'll stop the borrowing, we'll eliminate the earmarks, and I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't go back to pre-COVID levels. That will cut trillions and allow us to be safe. We also need to be not energy independent, energy dominant. We are blessed with resources, let's do it. But the reason no one should give give you a number, Hugh, on the amount of ships in the Navy is because in a few years, our interest expense is going to be more than our defense budget. So no one can give you that number realistically without first tackling what's happening with the financial situation. It would be a false number to give you that. We have got to understand this is a crisis. It is a national security concern. If we don't deal with what's going to happen with that interest expense in a few years, we're going to look like Japan. And we can't let that happen. The strong dollar matters. So first of all, any candidate that tells you that they're not going to take on entitlements is not being serious. Social Security will go bankrupt in 10 years. Medicare will go bankrupt in eight. Right now, you have Ron and Trump joining Biden and Pelosi saying they're not going to change or do any sort of entitlement reform. What we need to do is keep our promises. Those that have been promised should keep it. But for like my kids in their 20s, you go and you say, we're going to change the rules. You change the retirement age for them. Instead of cost of living increases, we should go to increases based on inflation. We should limit limit benefits on the wealthy. Bernie Marcus can tell you he hates getting that check. Limit the benefits on the wealthy. And then expand Medicare Advantage plans. Seniors love that. And let's make sure we do that so that they can have more competition. That's how we'll deal with entitlement reform. And that's how we'll start to pay down this debt. And can you give me a specific age? Have you determined the age? Again, you have to work with Chris. What I can tell you is you can. it's going to be those in their 20s just coming into the system. And it should reflect more of life expectancy. It doesn't do that now. First of all, you have to go to the source. 
We have lost more Americans than the Vietnam, Afghan, Afghanistan, and Iraq wars combined. We lost 75,000 Americans last year. Go to the source. It is the reason why we'll continue to say we will end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans. You watch how quick that flow stops. The second thing is we'll send special operations in to take out the cartels. We need to go to where they're distributing it, where the supply centers are, and take them out. We'll put 20 5,000 more Border Patrol and ICE agents on the ground and let them do their job. We will defund sanctuary cities. We will go back to the Remain in Mexico policy so that everybody stays in Mexico and they never get here in the first place. And instead of catch and deport, we'll go to catch and release. I'm sorry, instead of catch and release, we'll go to catch and deport. That is the way we'll deal with the border. Those are the things that we have to do going forward. But I do agree with Chris. One of the first things that we have to do is really focus on mental health and addiction centers. It is something that is needed in our country terribly because we don't deal with mental health and someone who doesn't get care for mental health falls into addiction and we owe it to them to treat it like the cancer that it is. Ambassador, <laughs> Ambassador Haley, you have one minute for your closing. Thank you. The world is on fire. We have a war in Europe. We've got a war in the Middle East. We've got China on the march. It is very important that we know how to defend our freedoms and how to defeat terrorism and socialism. We have to know the difference between good and evil. We have to know the difference between right and wrong. We need to know that a strong America doesn't start wars. A strong America prevents wars. And the way we can focus on that is to make sure we go back to the soul of America and be strong and proud again. And we can't do that. We can't win the fights of the 21st century with politicians from the 20th century. We have to move forward. And we can do this. I know we can do this. So join our movement. Go to NikkiHaley.com. And we will once again show what America that's strong and proud looks like. God bless. Ambassador, thank you.